Welcome to the Financial Knowledge Network Money Smart Learning Series, Lesson Number 8, Charge It Right. In this tutorial, we will explain the basic concepts of credit cards and debit cards. Using credit cards and debit cards correctly is a very important part of your debt elimination goals. Proper use of credit and debit accounts ensures that you will not spend needlessly on fees and interest. We will explain the proper techniques to help you protect yourself from these charges and fees. Our objectives with Charge It Right are to explain the purposes of credit cards, help determine which cards are right for your needs, help you identify the factors creditors are looking for when making credit decisions, help you use the proper techniques to use the card responsibly, and identify the proper steps to take when your card is lost or stolen. Although we strongly advocate living on a cash basis as a necessary strategy for a successful financial freedom strategy, there will be times when credit and credit cards are a necessary evil. Just remember that the use of credit versus cash should be carefully thought out. Always look for a cash alternative as the most inexpensive form of payment in the long run. Credit cards represent a convenient form of borrowing. You are given a credit line for a certain amount and you can access this balance to purchase things whenever you want. When you pay this balance off, you then have access to the credit limit available. This is called revolving credit. To maintain a credit revolving account, you will be required to make a minimum payment every month. Any part of the amount owing that is not paid in the monthly payment will be charged interest, which will be added to your next payment. There are several other types of credit cards which act more like debit cards. A cash card is a card that allows you to access the funds in your checking account using a Visa card. To properly use a debit card, you must have funds available in your account. By law, a bank is required to have you opt in to receive overdraft coverage for debit transactions. If you do not opt in to the overdraft protection, they cannot process a debit payment without funds being available. This is important to understand because banks have made a tremendous amount of income allowing people to charge something without the funds available and then charging them a fee, usually up to $35. We recommend to always opt out of the overdraft protection and live on a cash basis, thereby avoiding the overdraft fees associated with debit accounts. It is important to understand the difference between secured and unsecured credit as it relates to credit cards. Unsecured credit is any credit that does not require collateral. Collateral is assets that are used to secure a loan of some type. Credit cards are unsecured credit, so collateral is not required. However, in cases where you have damaged credit, there are secured credit cards available to use. These cards require you to prepay an amount, then that amount is made available to make purchases. Once payment is made, then more credit is available. This type of credit is helpful when trying to rebuild a credit score after a severe financial crisis, such as bankruptcy. Once a history of prompt payment is established, the user can then acquire unsecured credit. Some other types of cards are gold and platinum cards and reward cards. Gold and platinum cards typically have a higher credit limit and are the result of steady use and prompt payments. These cards may have certain perks available to the user, but may also have unfavorable terms. You will have a higher credit limit, but there may be other problems with the terms. Our position is that access to too much credit is a financial risk and can jeopardize your financial freedom plan, so we don't advise using enough credit to qualify for gold or platinum status. Reward cards may offer some additional benefits, such as airline miles or something else like cash rebates, as an incentive to use the cards. Typically, these cards will carry membership fees and other expenses. It is generally not going to save you money unless you can use a large quantity of the transactions regularly and accrue a significant points base. Be sure to examine the costs carefully and weigh the benefits against these costs. Credit card companies' primary form of advertising is to send you pre-approved offers. Keep in mind that these are offers that say you might qualify for the interest rate and credit limit being offered. However, you will definitely have to qualify based on your current income, FICO score, and whatever other criteria they deem necessary to extend the offer. Our advice is to not get caught up in this marketing, as the more offers you apply to, the more inquiries will be made to your credit report, and this can affect your credit score negatively, causing higher prices on other items, like an auto loan or insurance. Make sure you are only applying for the offers that can actually help you. Things to consider when contemplating a credit card offer are 
Annual Percentage Rate, or APR. The fees involved, the grace period. The balance computation method, is it daily, monthly, or annual? Is there a cash advance feature? Can I transfer my balance? When assessing the annual percentage rate, include the fees involved as an APR expense so you can get the true cost of credit as part of your review. If the card offers an introductory APR, make sure you understand how long the introductory period will last. The fees you need to be aware of are annual fees, over the limit fees, balance transfer fees, and cash advance fees. It is also important to know what the grace period is. This is the number of days after the due date you can pay before interest starts to accrue. Tips to consider when shopping for a credit card. Decide how you will use the credit card and what you will purchase with it. Start small. Do not charge too much on your credit card until you get comfortable with the monthly bill. Shop around for the plan that best fits your needs. Make sure you understand the terms of the plan before you accept the card. Read the fine print. Beware of introductory rates. You might start out with a credit card that has no annual fee for the first year, but you will be charged a fee in the second year. You might start out with a low interest rate and then find the interest rate is much higher after a few months. Beware of credit card issuers who require application fees. Most credit card issuers do not charge fees to open accounts. Make sure you understand the implications of fixed and variable rates as well as penalty APRs. Tips on how to use your credit card responsibly. Protect your credit card and account numbers to prevent unauthorized use. Draw a line through the blank spaces on charge slips so the amount cannot be changed. Tear up carbon copies of your receipts. Keep a record of your account numbers, expiration dates, and the phone numbers of each credit card issuer in a safe place, separate from your credit card, to quickly report a loss. Carry only the credit cards you think you will use. Pay off your total balance each month. If you cannot pay the total balance, try to pay more than the minimum amount. Read the fine print. Low advertised interest rates might not last as long as you think. You might not have a grace period with balances you have transferred from other credit cards. After you have established a good credit history, ask the credit card issuer to waive the fee or lower the interest rate. Do not keep more than two or three credit cards. Too many credit cards make overspending tempting. Many people do not control their spending or manage their finances wisely. There are, however, good reasons to have more than one card, especially if your credit limit is not high enough on one card to cover an emergency. Many financially responsible people can become overwhelmed by expenses or reduced income triggered by a serious illness, a job loss, or some other unexpected event. Make sure you understand the balance computation method. This will have a direct effect on how they determine how much interest to charge. The most common method is called the average daily balance. Be sure you are aware of how they will calculate your interest expense. If the card offers a cash advance option, make sure you understand the cost of this option. The credit card company will charge a fee for this service. The amount will vary, but a typical cost is 2% of the amount or $10, whichever is greater. Just remember that these fees must be factored into everything you are considering using the money for. If the card you are considering offers a balance transfer option, you may be able to move a balance from a high interest card to a lower interest card, effectively reducing your cost on an existing balance. This is typically offered as an inducement to bring a balance into a credit card company. Just make sure you have read the fine print carefully, as most of the time there are rules about the temporary balances, such as how long they last, and there may be some significant penalties associated with this as well. In addition to the factors described, you should also carefully consider any additional protections as well as the customer service levels associated with the card. Nothing is more of a hassle than receiving bad customer service when administrating a credit card. When applying for a credit card, there are a few things to keep in mind. You must be 18 years old to apply for individual credit. Individual credit is when you are the sole applicant and you are applying for consideration based on your income assets and credit history. If you are married, you may be applying for joint credit, where the credit worthiness of the applicants is considered collectively. If you are denied credit, it will most likely be for one of the following reasons. 
you have a negative credit history and are considered too large of a credit risk for the offer. You have not been at your job or residence long enough to satisfy their requirements. Your income does not match the criteria of the offer. If you are denied credit, the creditor is required to send you an adverse action notice informing you of their decision. Use this notice to acquire a free copy of your credit report. If your credit card gets lost or stolen, there are several important things to remember and steps you must take. Always be wary of identity theft and credit card fraud, and only give your number out to reputable people that you trust, especially over the phone or on the Internet. Always call the credit card company to report a lost or stolen card immediately. If you suspect you have been a victim of credit card fraud, contact the card issuer immediately. Always know your credit limit before making any purchases. If you execute a transaction that takes you over your credit limit, the credit card company will charge you an over-the-limit fee, which will add to the expense of your credit card. Always be diligent in avoiding these fees, and you will be moving forward in your financial freedom plan. Cost of making the minimum payment. Assumptions for this table include 18% APR. If the APR is higher, the item would be more expensive and would take longer to pay off. Minimum monthly payment equals greater of $10 or 4% of balance. Average daily balance method is used to calculate interest. Finance charge for one day equals 18% divided by 365 times the daily balance. No grace period. No late payments are made. No additional purchases are made. Minimum payment is received by the bank on the last day of the billing cycle. Most likely, the interest charges would be greater because the customer's minimum payment usually will not be received by the bank for several additional days. Years are rounded to the nearest whole year. Dollar amounts are rounded to the nearest dollar. Beginning around 2008, you are able to contact credit card companies by phone to find out the time and interest amount required to pay off a credit card balance if only the minimum monthly balance is made. Benefits of making more than the minimum payment. These charts assume you are not making additional purchases and you are making your payments on time. The minimum payment is 4%. Of course, the best way to save money and avoid paying interest charges is to pay off your balance in full when you first get your bill. Sample credit card statement. Your statement will show the credit card issuer name, account number, account summary, and a finance charge calculation. Always examine the statement closely when you receive it and make sure that the calculations are consistent with the terms. In closing, always be wary of any credit card offer and read very carefully the terms and conditions of the card. Credit card companies have made a living taking advantage of the fine print in the credit card terms of service. And remember, the easiest way to avoid the tricks and traps of the credit card industry is to learn to live on a cash basis.